All right. Double pitch coil vases. So you're going to need to have a double pinch for this. You want to think about your design a little bit ahead of time if you can. But right now we're really kind of exercising in shaping clay, using a double pinch, adding coils, and making sure we keep a nice form. So your, this assignment is going to be a double pinch pot with a hole cut in the top, and we're going to add coils on top of each other to create a vase. So we have our base of our vase here, our shoulder, neck, lip. So we want to make each one of those things. Then after we're done creating it while it's still wet, you guys are going to find textures to press into it so it gives it some sort of interesting design. And then we're going to use glazes. Glazes are awesome. Glazes love to run and drip and look super cool. So that's your next assignment. So what we want to do, put it to the side, double pinch. So what I did, pinch two pinch pots, stuffed them with newspaper, scored and slipped, blended, scored the outside, added our coil, blended it, smoothed it with a metal rib. You don't have to go crazy smoothing yet. What we want to do now is we want to kind of shape this a little bit. So the good thing is, is we have newspaper in here, so it shouldn't collapse on itself too much. Now, as the project gets that newspaper wet, it is going to start working less effectively. So you need to make sure that we kind of do this before that happens. Or make sure you please put it in a little extra newspaper next time. So I want to make my vase similar to the ones I showed you, where it goes in at the bottom and out at the top and then back in again. But right now, this is just a blob. You can make short vases, you can make wide vases, you can make tall, thin ones, that's totally up to you. It all depends on the pinch pot that you start with. If your pinch pot's short and wide, your vase will be short and wide. If your pinch pot's tall and skinny, your vase will be tall and skinny. Make your choices. So what I wanna do, is I wanna make one part go in a little bit. It looks like this is starting to do that. So I'm gonna hold at an angle on the table, kinda gently roll while putting a little bit of pressure while it's at an angle. This is not a perfect science. And in fact, right now, this is basically a balloon of clay because all the air is trapped. So what I'm gonna wanna do is put a little hole in it right at the top there to let that air out. And what that does is it lets the clay be a little bit easier to keep its shape. See, I'm kinda putting my hands at an angle, kinda compressing to get that shape. Now, at this point, I would tell you, go to a hair dryer. Hair dry it for five minutes to help keep that shape. Again, as in my other videos I have said, I don't got time for that. So, move on to the next step. So we have our shape of our vase, just like kind of where we're looking for. What I'm going to be looking for is symmetry. So occasionally you want to kind of stand away from it, turn it, so you can fully see the whole project. You see this goes up, this is blurbed out, so you want to kind of adjust that. I'm not gonna go crazy with it, but that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna cut open the top now. So I'm gonna stand up so I can see inside more. So we can make the inside of the vase. Take your handy dandy carving tool, and I'm just gonna cut a circle out of this. The circle doesn't have to be perfect. You wanna try and get it as neat as you can. Don't cut it too big if you might want a smaller neck. So we take this, put it off to the side with scrap clay in a bag, okay? We opened it up. I'm gonna want my vase to come up this way, so I'm not gonna open it up much more, but I'm gonna need to take this out though. Now that we have our shape and we have hair dried it, <laughs> I'm gonna take the newspaper out. Because with a vase, you're gonna see the inside of it. This is gonna be ugly. So we wanna clean that up the best that we can. If your vase is super thin and you can't see in it, don't worry about it. Try your best. Now what we're going to do is smooth this inside. Now, I can't get a metal rib in here. Not going to happen. Can't really get my hand in there. Also not going to happen. I can get this in there. This is called this is called a wood modeling tool. Used for a variety of things, like modeling. But also, I use the end of this, like the pad of my thumb, to blend where I can't reach. I'm going to take this tool. The rounded side is going to face where you want to smooth, and you're going to pull up with it dip this in water. Support with your other hand. And I'm gonna kind of drag this up from the bottom into my hand. And it's gonna make this inside a lot nicer looking. It's not gonna be perfect. But remember, we added a coil in here. See, I'm using it sideways now to kind of scrape some clay away a little bit because there's too much. 
So I can do that too. Not too much, okay? Smoothing, dragging my tool upward. You can see it's already getting a lot better. After this step, you're going to take a larger paintbrush, dip it in water, not too much, and you're going to use this to smooth it out. Same way you did with this tool, but it'll look better. Okay? You notice it's getting flimsy? Hit it with the hair dryer again for a few minutes. So let's say that I've smoothed this all out. It looks gorgeous and ready to move on. I'm going to try and push my shape back a little bit. Don't worry if this inside isn't perfect yet. We're going to clean it up. Bending my edge in here so it's a little more smooth, not caving in. Now I'm ready to start building up the neck of my vase. This next part, again, is a little tricky, but it's important. So we want to attach coils to the top. So I'm going to put score marks on here in a minute. I have some pre-made coils here. Ooh, they broke. It's okay if they break. We're going to blend them all in. And I made them a little too soft. So be careful about that too. They have score marks on them already. So, depending on where I lay my coils, is going to adjust the shape of the top of my vase. I'm gonna do a little mock-up here so you can kind of understand that. Taking some extra clay and just rolling out some quick, ugly coils. Ooh. Whee! All right, so this is the top of my vase here. I'm going to place my coil around with score marks, break it off. If I want my vase to keep going straight up, each coil and score marks will be on the top surface of the previous coil. And then I would continue coiling upward. Okay, coiling, scoring, slipping, blending, all that stuff. If I want my vase to start going outward, my score marks would go on the outside edge, not the outside outside, but just on the edge. Score marks on this too. And the coil would lay a little bit towards that outside edge. This one too, a little bit. Don't do it too steep because it'll flop on itself. But you can see, if I did that, it's going to start to go outward. Okay? I say every three coils you should blend them. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. If you want your coils to go inward, the coiling is going to be done with score marks towards the inside edge. Again, score marks towards the inside edge. And again, towards the inside. This would be good for making a long skinny neck base, or you can go in and then back out, but this can also go up and out. You can make a lot of cool stuff with it. Okay, looks like a bit like a poop emoji. Moving on. I'm going to put my coils on here now. So, Scoring the top. Better than that. Taking our little slip thing. Now we're going to lay. Ooh, this coil's losing it. I'm going to lay this on the top for now. I'm going to go up. For this first coil, I'm going to blend it in just because it's good to get a nice base. What I'm going to do is blend the inside into the coil and blend the coil down if I don't have enough on the inside to blend into it. See, I'm blending that all in. Just using my hand for blending. Your hands are the best tools you have, okay? I'm not going to worry about the outside yet. But, score marks on top again. Score marks on the bottom again. Slip. Coil on top. Do it again. Score marks. Slip. Score marks. Actually, yeah. I'm going to put my score marks towards the outside edge. Start going outward. Score marks on the outside edge. Slip. Score marks. Lay this towards the outside. Break it off where it meets. Now I'm going to start blending in a little bit. So I'm going to take my thumb on the right hand, and my other fingers are going to support the inside. I'm just going to drag down. If you don't have your hand supporting here, this will cave in. 
I'm gonna do this all the way around. Don't forget, we gotta do the inside too. Blend in the outside first so that coil that's starting to go on the outer edge doesn't collapse when I blend it. And no, the top will not be even yet. We're going to trim that just like the pinch pots to make a nice even top. Okay, it's a rough smooth there. If you notice you're having trouble getting to smooth, you can use this tool here. It looks like the pad of your finger to help you smooth out. Again, careful you're not scraping too much material away. I do not want to see ridges of coils when you're done with this. Your coils need to be fully blended. So they have a nice smooth surface for the glaze later. This is all really rough blending right now, okay? I'm gonna add one more coil towards the outside edge. Score marks, slippy thing. Coil, score marks towards the outside edge. Uh-oh, doesn't fit. Scrap coil. Magic. Make sure you blend those together on the edge. And I'm gonna blend this down. Supporting it where I'm blending. And blending the inside. You might want to make one more coil than you think you need because we're going to have to trim this. When you trim it, it gets shorter and it might not be the shape you want. You must use at least four coils at the top. I'll be able to tell with how tall it is because your coils aren't supposed to be much thinner than the thickness of your finger. So we want to clean this up. Metal rib time. Metal rib. Hand on the inside. Blend downwards. If there are areas you cannot reach with the metal rib, depending on the shape of your vase, use a sponge. Again, very little water. You do not want this to collapse on itself. Supporting it with my other hand. Now this might fit right on the inside edge a little bit, but not that well. So be careful if you use the metal rib on the inside, because when you use it on one side, it might poke the other, which I just did. You can see it right there. I'll smooth it up. Okay, so this is losing its shape. Because I've been manipulating it a little bit too much, but now that it's open, see how I can push out areas too? Pushing out the shoulder, gently a little bit at a time to make a stronger shoulder on it. You always wanna check all sides though to make sure it's symmetrical. Great way to do that. One, stand away from it and see. Two, use your hands. You can see I'm not looking at it. Checking for symmetry. This edge is sticking out more than the others. This one's flatter. You can see this is higher, this is lower, right? Yes, it is. So then you can appropriately adjust. Next step for smoothing, sponge. Very little water. Taking your time. Don't rush like I am. Stupid dent from the metal rib I just smoothed out. Made the clay a little thin, so be careful. Smoothing with the sponge. I'm not gonna do the whole thing right now. So you don't need to see it all smooth. You know what smooth looks like. You can run the rib along the outside again. Be careful not to push too hard because if you can't get your hand in there to support it, you ruin it. I'll show you one nice thin side. Ish. Personally, I would add probably three or four more coils to get more height out of it. But you can see this is nice and smooth. Then the final step, and then when we're smoothing, is trimming. Again, eye level, just like the pinch pots. We want to trim across to make it even. 
please make sure you hair dry this if it's flimsy like this is right now because right now this trim that I'm doing is going to be a little rough looking. Now, again, I am tri trimming horizontally. Don't trim it at an angle. Make many a weird face when people do that. I'm gonna get up. My wall's pretty even up here. So, I need my sponge along the top here. Yes, this looks sloppy, I know. I've had students comment in the past when I've made something sloppy that it does not look good. Used a bit more profanity that it looked like poop. It's gonna look like that because I'm rushing. Ceramics is all about taking your time. Well, while actually working, not just sitting there doing nothing, of course. This would need a lot more attention to get to where I expect yours to be. But you can see imperfections in it. There's a dent here, a dent here. But it's getting somewhere and it's starting to look very nice. So with this, I would go more height because you can see it kind of looks stumpy. You want to kind of bring the form up more elegantly. If you have a short wide pot, maybe you're going to make a short vase top edge because it might look weird if it's super tall and such a fat short pot. At this point, do not let it dry. If you let it dry, you won't be able to press the texture in it. So you want to find something around your house, around the room, wherever you can find it to push the texture. You can even use this guy to do it. What we're going to do is make sure we support the side of our project that we're pushing against while we're adding our texture. This makes a pretty cool mermaid scale, actually. Okay? Lots of options for textures. What I recommend is you take some of that scrap clay, lay it flat, press your texture into that first before pressing it into your project and possibly ruining it. If you put a texture in there and it doesn't look right, use a metal rib to smooth it and a sponge. If it starts getting too thin, we can maybe fix it up a little bit and you could just chat with me about that, how to do it, okay? That is a double pinch coil vase. Once you are done with everything, of course, put your name on the bottom and we'll let it dry and wait for the next step.